Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are actually going to be covering Fear Peppered on his tank Luke build. Now there has been a lot of different builds currently going on with Luke between tank and pen. So we might cover also pen Luke, but today we've got Amir with me. How you doing Amir? I'm pretty good, pretty good. I uh, don't know if I've seen too many people playing tank Luke recently as I think pen has been the preferred playstyle. Being able to just queue in, try and one-shot someone, and then run away, it uh, it feels really fun. No, for sure. I, and that is, I think, one of the reasons why I really wanted to highlight Tank Luke today. Mainly because Pen Luke has been a lot more of the craze, and it's kind of that funny, you know, land, one-shot, instant kill a target, and move on. Sort of like many assassins play. But Tank Luke is still really strong, and Fear Pepper is one of the uh, more iconic Luke players for playing Tank Luke. Played a lot in the past seasons. Uh, just recently coming back into this season and tried out multiple different builds from my understanding but now it kind of gravitated back to the tank luke as what he, that's been his try and true and i think we're gonna see some really crazy plays on what tank luke can do in these kind of games yeah i know fear and pepper is uh oh uh, i was about to say known a bit for their luke as we throw the queue in the opposite direction but i think we'll still be able to pick up this kill we know that we don't really need to be hitting abilities as yeah this oh should be free. Okay, I got kind of scared for a second, but we're able to get the kill and uh, with a little Luke emote, get out. Yeah, I mean, that was absolutely just a free kill regardless. Using the Ardor... Well, actually, I guess he doesn't have Evolve yet, so he didn't use the Ardor reset, but, you yeah. know, trying to get that extra yeah. secure without having to land the Q2. Oh, I was about to say, I think we can get out. We have no wards, though. We can't get to the, uh, to the speed gate, and... Oh, we're actually going around. We're alive a lot longer than I thought we should be. We... Might actually... Oh, wait. We get out. Does he win the 1v1 again? We're back into the 1v1. No, <laughs> They're the coming 1v1. from every angle. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think that in the 1v1, he wins that. He went back to half HP. We had our Sylvia opponent at, at half HP as well. But, I mean, the nice thing is we die at level 7, so we get a fast revive opposed to dying one level higher, which might have netted us a 20-second revive timer. But... Sadly, we TP'd onto our teammate in the middle of a fight, I think. Oh, that. The Jukes. I love the Jukes. But yeah, I mean, a little unfortunate kind of TPing onto his team uh, while they were in the middle of a fight. But you know what happens there? I mean, we've seen like his Luke be able to turn down fights even on low HP. So I think maybe he's just fine with like trying to take a gamble on that turnaround. Because at that point, I mean, if he could almost win a 1v3 on this character early, imagine what he could do I with mean... a 2v3. Yeah, especially with the fact that he's just willing to go for some of these, uh, I want to say sillier plays that most people wouldn't look for. Hopping onto the jump pad, making sure that the uh, the Yuki's on it, and then jumping behind him with your E to guarantee that he gets on it. I didn't even realize Luke can also Q all the way over this wall to get onto these bears. Like, I, yeah, I didn't know that fact. That That's crazy. Like, being able to see him just pull out some of these smaller things that most Luke mains probably wouldn't know or probably wouldn't do um it uh it shows his uh his experience exactly I, and I, yeah i think it's more like you know it's not necessarily uh always a knowledge thing sometimes it might just be a factor of like just not something that they would do normally do right and it's the it's kind <laughs> of that or unorthodox thinking about ways to optimize your your mobility and usage of the character yeah like um I think a lot of Luke players have been trying to make, uh, trying to get the plays where you Q in, E behind them, D skill them back to your team, and like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I think, at least with Beard Peppers, I don't see it too often. I see us just play like a regular game of Luke where we're trying to dodge as many abilities with all of our mobility and then use D skill as a way to disrupt or interrupt our opponents. And I think that is, that's the way that I like to see a lot of Luke. Play, especially tank lukes because you're not there to go and like one shot someone remove them from the game you're there to to play a similar role to i think tank ekion where you're just going around the fight making sure that no one can feel safe at all times for sure plus also i mean we haven't talked about team comps uh in this game just yet but if you look at this team comp i mean right now he's got double back lines at the aya he's got uh the Eva. So right now, it's really going to be important for him to be that traditional front line. But because he's a Luke one trick, you know, obviously he's not going to be playing some of the other front lines that we're that we're familiar with. 
so it's really going to be interesting to see how he kind of incorporates luke's kit to be able to try and be that great front to back for his team yeah unfortunately we're gonna lose the random rng that uh dropped off the wolf as we were trying to run away but i think yeah we see him playing tank luke who isn't really known for really good peeling and we have to play with double backliners which means that a lot of our fights are going to have to be like decisively won we have to make sure that our opponents don't like don't have any chance to counter engage make sure that we're always denying our opponents the way onto our team but with luke it's going to be a hard one and i'm wondering how he's going to do it throughout this game for sure especially because right now we're technically already behind so we couldn't contest objective because our team didn't end up uh, being grouped for an objective area so we opted to take the wolves just to get that extra credit a little bit of farm and we're now officially on day two grouping so we'll see how this fight goes i mean this is a really good spot for them yeah we hit a three-man lucar or sorry two-man lucar and now we're just trying to out sustain our opponents make sure that our team is able to just do all the damage in the world i'm i'm so surprised we literally we just sat in three and three people press w go back to half hp just keep autoing them keep pressing w again and like with the amount of damage we're taking i'm i'm surprised we're not on the floor i feel like alonzo dies there uh, that's what i'm saying man tank luke incredibly tanky plus also i mean perfect usage of bat skill to try and keep the team away from uh from his back line and then also just trying to be that nuisance in the front just to kind of keep them their attention because again you would think hey we'll just blow up the luke and then they'll have no front line and we'll just move on to the next target but they just couldn't do it yeah it's very surprising to see how much damage we're actually able to soak with this tank luke build I think a lot of this is just Beard knows his character. He knows what he's allowed to take. He knows when he's allowed to be in the middle of three people and when he's not. And just being able to abuse the fact that he has this knowledge and other people don't, it's uh, it's very surprising to see what we're able to do. For sure. And again, we're fighting on the bridge. Another really good spot for the Aya and the Eva. And again, look at this damage. I mean, our team is doing so much damage at first, but Fear is just able to tank through it like it's nothing. Yeah, I think one of the big things we're doing is Beard is jumping honestly really far away from his team. And it forces the opponents to start engaging on him rather than having the chance to engage on his team. Where um, Beard's team started playing the bottom of the bridge and he just randomly cues in, jumps all the way into the middle, and then ease behind the Marcus as Marcus is trying to ult him back into his team. And it just, it means that now Marcus is out of his engage tools, the Shukai fell on the floor instantly and like if we can't really expect uh i think their last teammate was an aya yeah i mean it's very hard for us especially a pistol aya to make a hero play like that into a 1v3 so being able to play this style where we're just all the way in front of our team and not die tank luke it feels really nice and we also have no transition so we only get tank here from here exactly this is a no transition play style and uh, the factor is is it's like you kind of said it's like he kind of creates that natural space in that natural taunt by diving in deep and then utilizing the U luke su sustain and mobility to kind of back out as the team then is like well we've committed resources he's at low hp we should try and get him killed and they kind of over push and try and chase it but at that point now you have even aya already chunking so much damage into them and for free they don't even have to struggle they have all the space in the world to do whatever they want and the fight kind of just turns and i mean look at this first buy giga chad suit yeah i think especially for any tanks that uh that don't have too much sustain in their kit. I know Alonzo doesn't build it too often because he has built-in sustain with his W. I don't think Estelle's build it too often either because they have built-in sustain with their E. Um, basically some good way to reduce damage as long as you don't have it. I know a lot of tanks like to go Giga Chad suit and with Luke not having <laughs> with Luke not having a good way to uh, to deny damage on himself, he only has a way to heal himself. I know it's uh, it's a pretty good pickup. But also, we were just uh, dancing around on cons or on the sorry our TP, trying to figure out where we were going for. I think it was like 20 to 30 seconds. Yeah, they were really unsure of where to go, and I think at the same time they also were all just trying to get Luke to TP first. But Luke was following whoever was making the TP location calls, so they kept kind of shuffling between each other. Yeah, I mean sometimes, especially as a tank, you uh you know sometimes you're not feeling too confident in your macro calls or. You feel like someone else has a different plan and you just want to make sure that their plan goes well but 
you know, they're they're waiting on you to do something, and then it just becomes this game of who's gonna do something first. For sure. I mean, well, that's a tough one to do too. Plus, because right now they were in a situation with no intel about any parts of this entire map, uh, anywhere in this entire game. They only had information in stream and temple. So any TP was a sort of gamble, and they sort of just decided, you know, let's go to the yellow TP. Yeah, I think they chose pond, um, like specifically because. This is a really risky zone for any other team. There isn't too much reason for another team to be here as Stream was a battle zone and Pond is about to go out. So the only way to really get out of Pond right now is to go and either jump pad or run all the way through cemetery. It's just, uh, there's not too many reasons for people to go there. So it's just a pretty nice TP for them. For sure. And what did he... Oh, he ended up going Force Field 3 as his second buy. He went Tax Skill and went to Force Field 3. So not even not even an item at this point. I mean, we've proven that his items are already tanky enough. So adding that extra defense on the Force Field is uh, making a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm also wondering what he might be building on his arm slot if we actually go into the Myth Shield as it is, I think, the direct upgrade from Music Box. We're going to get attack speed, we're going to get health and some defense. But... I don't think that many Lukes, or I don't think many people in general have been building uh, Myth Shield too often recently. But we're looking for some Qs, trying to find an angle in. We're going to see, I wonder if he's going to find the Q. Oh, we actually missed this Q, but yeah, we're just forcing our opponents to hit us. We have this global taunt without actually having a taunt in our kit. Yeah, Everyone is, is hitting us. We force field for a, basically a thousand health. And just making sure that our team isn't actually being hit. Yep, we're just forcing the Marcus to come back to us. Shukai misses the E while he's, again, trying to target us. And it, it's just so insane. We're able to walk up, get the taunt, and then... And then just force our opponents to try and hit us while we're dancing around them with all of our mobility. Yeah, it's actually really interesting. The most thing I think is the most interesting about this is that the playstyle almost looks like you're putting yourself in an extremely bad position because you're trying to make yourself look very uh, tantalizing to the enemy, right? You want the enemy to think that this Luke is out of position. He's an easy target like this right here, right? Going in between his entire, uh, the entire enemy team, playing it super far forward. It really makes you want to go on the Luke. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because, I mean, Fear knows his mobility. He knows how to get out and he's just so tanky. Like this force field just does nothing. And now Barbara's just going to drop. I mean, I I don't know if you saw the beginning of that fight, but uh, Feared was yeah standing in the middle of all three of them, and they they just kept trying to pump damage into him. He wasn't dying. Went to I think half HP after they used their entire kits, and then while he was doing that, his team was just chunking. I think it was the Barbara to like one HP, and then Yuki also down, so that Feared can only just run up, press R, connect the R, and then Yuki was on the floor. We just run back to our team. And then help them out. Sadly, missed the uh, bat skill as the Tazia was in stasis. But I mean, we didn't even need it. We just like I I honestly think that it's all about this positioning, knowing where to be to make our opponents think that we're free, and then we just go and kill them. Yeah, and the other thing too is because he's diving so deep into all of them. If they ignore him and try to like overextend the dive into the back line, right? You just ignore the Luke. The Luke still does tons of damage. And because he's in between everyone, he has the pressure to be able to cleave every person in that clump and do a ton of AOE damage that will actually make them have to pay attention to him. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very surprising to see because I don't think I've seen many Lukes do things like this. It's... Like, when we see Tank Luke, I feel like most of the time it's just people queuing in, going back and forth, and also building a bit of damage. But from Feared, we're seeing one, maybe if you want to say two tank or two damage items, um, being the boots and our weapon. But we're generally just a big stat stick of, of tank slots, and then we're able to do a bit of extra damage by connecting these Qs. We're going to see him connect another Q going forward. Our team is just doing so much damage from afar, and then let's see. Yeah, we're just we're putting so much pressure on Nessius. I, I don't know if you're able to see. We just did like, I think, 500 damage within a couple seconds, forcing the enemy Luke to come back to us. And it's all just from having good positioning on these Qs, being able to connect them as I think it's most of our damage. We're getting a decent amount of damage from W auto attacks, but mm -hmm. it, uh, compared to just hitting our Q and getting another Q, hit, hitting them for like 200, 300 damage, 
it's uh like hitting these cues is just so important to being able to be threatening for sure now one thing also to mention here is right now i mean we're seeing crusader helmet we're seeing centipede's pauldron i really want to emphasize i mean fear is someone that knows luke inside and out and has played many different variants of bruiser and tank luke i would say that this is probably not his always go-to build if you look at it i mean he's got eva he's got aya he doesn't need the extra damage he needs the extra survivability so i think he's opting to intentionally take some more items that are a bit more bulky keeping him alive being able to be more survival and giving up a little bit of his damage to be that tank whereas uh, i do believe if you if you looked at it there's other times where he might be playing a slightly different build where he might go a little bit more damage on his headpiece or his arm right depending on what the circumstance is yeah i actually wonder if he's going to make uh his pre-food instead of going for boots as i thought he might be going for uh i think it's called wild walkers he um, is going uh, yeah yeah because uh he is going for a cdr upgrade it's in the boot slot it's still a nice upgrade and i actually oh yeah sorry i was wondering where he's getting this uh this extra 5% CDR from, but I forgot that he is running the Crusader's Helmet, as it's not an item I see too often anymore. Oh, I think I think Crusader Helmet's still pretty good, though, but you're right. Not as many people running it right now. And again, like I said, I think it's, he's just kind of accepting, you know, he doesn't need to do as much damage. He just needs to be in everyone's face. Yeah, like, we're, we're just playing so far up. We're putting enough pressure. Oh, we're actually going to see a Jackie come onto our teammate, though. But they just, they don't have the instant damage and we're just able to put them on the floor right before they're able to do anything to our team. Now we can just keep playing the pressure, walking up, making sure that our teammate can get the final kill onto uh, the enemy Jackie. And we just sit here <laughs> sustaining, doing so much damage. I also forgot to talk about Luke passive is giving us so much health as every time he gets one of these downs, he's healing like 400 to 500 health. And it's all just because he has a lot of stacks, and I think it also scales off attack power, which he's not really losing too much out on, as he's just under 200. Well, exactly. And I mean, the other thing, too, is did we not just watch how incredible that fight was? He was so tanky. He was able to constantly just keep walking up, putting the pressure. Aya wasn't even a part of half that fight. She just finished the down body for the most part, as, like, Luke was trying to 1v2, keeping the pressure, and his spacing awareness of when he can and can't go in with his cooldowns was so exemplary there he constantly you know he'd queue he'd wait he'd go in do his combo walk back out wait kind of like just making sure chloe's not getting all the free hits in the world while also making sure he's maximizing his healing and damage output yeah especially i love the fact that he's throwing a queue connecting it and then holding out a bit because Having the Q on someone is a lot of pressure. It makes them think, is he going to go in now? Is he, when's he going to go in? And then we're able to just hold it, make them have the have to play the mental game, and then we just always win because we're engaging when we want to, when we know it's good. It, it's honestly, like, it, it's just surprising to watch, and we're going to see last two teams come in. I think we're just going to chase this team as we do still have Wick buff. We want to try and look for some th sort of fight while we do. Yeah, I mean, they do just get visioned. And, oh, this is actually a kind of scary fight as our team was getting engaged on, but they're able to just run away and we're able to take the threat. We're taking this global taunt in with no taunt in our kit, but, and now we just sit here, soak up all the damage. We actually connect the Q and the Q, there's one that more down. Clean, that was a clean Q. And I mean, again, yeah, it's like, it's a simple factor of, it's not like fear panic. Sometimes a tank or a frontline will panic and they'll bring themselves to be frontline to their team like immediately rush back to them but that immediately just allows the rest of the enemy team to also walk up to your team because now you've got you've created that you've removed that space between you and fear didn't he just kind of stayed back made sure he was doing as much pressure as he could keeping everyone attention and just shows how much pressure tank luke can really do in this meta still and with that, guys, we'll see you in the next video.